getting started on uh, building the fence. I've staked out the uh, string for the fence line, about six inches on our side of the property. Because we do live in a forest, digging the fence post holes is going to be kind of challenging for me to do. So I've got folks from the uh, Northwest Landscape Care Company that are going to handle that part of the job. Now determining exactly, exactly where to put those fence posts is, uh, you know, a little tricky. You want them to be about eight feet apart. So I've spaced them, spaced them temporarily about that far, far apart with these little blocks of wood. But one of them is pretty close to an old tree stump with the roots in the ground that they're going to probably have to, it would have to be ground out probably to uh, put a pit post hole there. So we're probably going to shift it just about a foot back from where I had originally ideally kind of wanted it. I'll go ahead and walk along the string here and we'll, uh, we'll take a look. I'll be back when we're uh, ready to dig. Digging the holes right now. This cut off old fence post end piece was in the way of a new hole, so the guys pried it out of the ground. It came out much easier than I thought it would, and I went ahead and had them pull out the others as well. Temp, temp right here. While I hold this, I just we just need a little bit. Is that uh, yeah, I like it's level? Yeah. It looks good on the beam. That looks pretty good to me. I'll tap this out and put the water in here. Yeah. 
I keep forgetting I have to hold the camera and I was cold. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, come on on this side because then you'll see how much you need. I was telling Brian that I bought that years ago, and if you know if you're doing it by yourself, you can't do it without that. Yeah. Oh, the leveler. Yeah. 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 Now, that, so what we do is I'll just tie this here around, and we'll put a we'll put it over the top, and that will keep it level all the way when you get that get that one set and then all the other ones will just bring up to it yep yep and then the first the next thing you do is try to get a little middle post you know because that way they keep the mm -hmm. uh, the string taut mm -hmm. so what we're doing is we're setting the two outside posts first that way we can string a line down and make sure that the posts are not only just straight and in line but also height wise that it makes sense as an even slope and once the two outside posts are actually firmly in the ground they're not going to move and it'll be uh, a lot easier to, to do it that way okay so this is the other end of the uh, fence we've gone ahead and put a little gravel in there for the drainage and we're tamping it down now we're going to make sure the height is right before we uh, put in a little more gravel and uh, then do the concrete Yeah, we definitely dropped it some. Yeah, okay, six feet is to here, so we still need to go down okay. a little bit more. I'll just do a little bit here. Yeah, put the whole thing in. And I'll just make sure it's tamped a little bit because... Just touching the string and I'm looking straight down for the disappearance of the other uh, post. And I can still see a little bit of this side, so it needs to spin this way. That looks uh, that looks right for okay. its position. Now we just okay. need to make sure it's level. Okay, it's level right here. So go ahead and put just a little gravel around it. Okay, this one needs to tip just that looks which way? Just a little bit towards you, and, and that's it. Okay, just, just okay. Make, so so right. put the gravel in there, we'll have to adjust it because yeah. we're going to be moving it just a hair. But long as we're close. Okay, so we're not touching the string. But, uh, I think we'll be okay. We don't really want to put pressure on the string because exactly. it's bowing the fence out. But, you know, I don't, you know, you know that power auger that they used yesterday? My face on, can't, what that? Ben over. Mike came down to help me. We hit a couple ruts, and boy, that thing just came right against our thigh. Yeah. yeah oh, that hurt. Just as it is for the moment. Now I got this side, pull this side. So you can watch that one. Yep, I got a bubble there. And then, right? Okay, I'm gonna pop this one in there. Yeah, I like this. Okay. Alright, we're good. I right, have a water once you're ready. I think you go ahead and put water in now. Okay. Hey, you know, you better edit this before you set it up because if the fence falls over, I wouldn't I would put the video out for maybe five years. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't our fence. <laughs> okay, I, like I kind of doubt anything that Brian puts up is going to fall down anytime soon. Oh, he boy. designs things to be earthquake proof for like earthquake, tsunami, thunderstorm, well, tornadoes happening all at the same time. Yeah. World apocalypse. <laughs> All right, so we've done some thinking about how the fence is going to work. 
we're going to set the middle post next because it's it's the high spot on the slope and then we'll step down going to the front and step down going to the back evenly as we set the other posts for the fence to make a more even transition from high spots high spots to low spots all right so this is the middle post the high part in the slope and what we're going to do is step up to it from the front and in even in even increments and at 12 and a half inches for the level line we're going to be three and an eighth higher than the string on the next post over. So it's great for me that dad is always up for helping on these kind of projects, but he's a pretty good sport. When it comes to YouTube videos, I think he's a little on the fence about it. All right, so building a fence with help is a little more chaotic than just doing it by myself. It's good to have the help, but it's a little difficult to film it because I'm trying to help with a project that I'm not, that I haven't done a lot of. I haven't built a lot of fences. And I've got a couple of people trying to give me suggestions on what to do and trying to keep track of everything. It's a little, it gets a little chaotic. So this first section we put in temporarily to test the spacing. Originally, I had thought about using uh, gaps for what's called a good neighbor fence of about the width of a 2x4. <clears throat> good neighbor fence has fence slats on both sides so it looks good from both, you know, both the front and the back. How's that Robert Frost poem go again? Good family makes good, good neighbor fences, something like that and it's a little bit open so you can kind of see through and it's not just this big you know opaque wall <clears throat> we like the look of it but after doing you know up to here it became real clear that we were going to be able to see too much through the fence we wanted a little more privacy than that so we did more practice sections over here with the uh, thin part of a 2x4 two, two for spacing and that'll be much better. I just made this jig this morning and this will be real handy for just sliding into place, making sure it's secure, slide up the next board, screw it in real quick, pull this out, put it on for the next one and just you know go right on down the line checking the level every now and then but for now I have to take all these boards off except for the first one and put them back on with my my new jig and it will be good to go from there got the fence boards off and this is a good enough point to uh, describe how I'm going to be putting this fence slats up and make them look nice and even. Because I've stepped each post up in height evenly, it's going to be sort of an even rise all the way along. And I've got a 2x4 that is longer than the approximate 8 feet between the posts. I set that on each end. Then when I go to put the next board up, I just come up and touch it. And then, you know, just keep, keep rising along as I go. Chances are pretty likely that I'll have to fill in a little bit of dirt where there'll be some gaps on the ground, but that's, that's not a big deal. I don't want to, um, Bring the dirt all the way up to the boards because then you're getting moisture in there and encouraging rot so uh so it'll be uh it'll be a kind of a kind of a nice way to do it i think so some of these boards are actually going to have to be trimmed a little bit from the bottom as well as 
some of the spacing with the dirt. So a little bit of adjustment both ways. I flipped this board upside down, got my jig in place, and I just go down to touch where it'll be approximately. And then I can, by looking at the 2x4, I can make a mark and cut that on the uh, chop saw. side <clears throat> this took me a little longer to figure out than I'd like to admit <clears throat> for this jig you can just center it right on the uh, back side of one of your posts or one of your uh, uh, fence pickets make sure it's nice and even check that it's level and then very carefully slide your next board up to meet it and you're good to go from there. On this side of the fence, where you have the exposed four by fours, we're generally going to have to custom fit each one to uh, just work around the slight imperfections as to uh, the width of the board and where it will have to meet. I'm going to worry about these pieces a little later and just kind of keep going. Moving right along on the fence, making some good progress. Right about here, close to the middle of the fence, was one of the trickiest spots. There was a, a big tree that we cut off right on the property line. Anyway, it's interfering a bit with the fence building. I'll have a couple of close-up shots that you'll be able to see better. Basically, I've just had to cut around and up over the uh, the tree stump with the fence boards on the on the lower side just about four inches off of this one and every board adjustment is custom and a little bit different from the last one. This one, because of the mounded quick crete around the 4x4 posts, 
has to be cut at a slight angle so it just sort of follows along that line of the of the cement another slight angle piece for the uh, mound of the concrete Here's what some of that custom cut looks like around this middle section. takes a while and it's repetitive. How can anyone get bored building a fence when the results are so nice? That was the last board, except for those weird little snippets that are going to have to be pieced in on the back. I've already got those measured out and in the van. I'm going to take them out to my dad's to use the table saw to get a nice, good, clean, straight cut on those things. And uh, they'll go up real quick. It's pretty satisfying to, uh, to uh, have this fence come out so well. I'm happy with it. So here on the back side of the fence, I'm exposing the 4x4s, and that means occasionally along the line of fence, I've had to custom cut some of these fence pickets so that the spacing would be appropriate wherever it happens to, to land against the post. So these will be the last two boards officially for the fence. Right here, I've got a fairly significant little gap underneath the fence. I may not be able to move heaven, but I can certainly move a little earth to fix that. Tearing down the old fence, which was a previous episode, and now rebuilding this new one is the next phase in uh, an exciting project for Wendy and I. We're getting new animals and we'll be revealing that pretty soon. Uh, something Wendy's been looking forward to a long time, so she's very happy that, uh, that we're finally again making progress on this, uh, this area of our yard.